Newcast. Greetings, fellow noobs! Welcome to another Newcast. Yes, this is Glomis, bringing you a 1v1 here on... In the Antigish, see what happens when you take some time off. Not even taking time off, just not being able to cast for like a week, being sick, and Thanksgiving, and all this stuff, and bringing Fragment Fragment. You feel worthless. You feel worthless. Isn't that right? Worthless. Yes, worthless. Worthless, our red Zerg player, his opponent, none other than your friend and mine in the blue Terran pieces, it's Djibouti! Djibouti, back on Noobcast. Always a pleasure to see my good friend sending in replays, kicking some Zerg butt, if that's what happens, I don't even know, because I don't watch this game, he just said, you need some Terran reps, and here's a Terran rep. So, um, yeah, I don't really get that many Terran reps. Uh, replays. I mean, have since I've said that in the last cast, I have been getting a few. So thank you to those who've been sending in your Terran replays. Um, it's duly appreciated. It is um, probably the race I know least about now because I've been casting PVZs like they're going out of style. Um, I have to ask your indulgence. My FPS is. Uh, consistently in the tank right now. I know exactly why it's consistently in the tank, but I am not going to start over. Um, hopefully it'll rectify itself and things will sort. Um, but yeah, Worthless with the quick scout finds Djibouti straight away, sees where he is. Um, wait, I want to, uh, yeah, found him sees the gas, didn't scout anything else, so he's not going to see if he's like doing any kind of proxy barracks or anything like that. But he's going to go ahead and drop his hatch. Uh, hatch first build here, hatch then spawning pool. Um, it's weird because for a long time I thought Terran, even though I played Protoss, I thought Terran was the race I knew most about back in the beginning. Because you played in the campaign and all the best players are Koreans, and you watch them with GSL, and I've learned something, um, maybe about myself or about the game in particular, um, watching is not enough. I heard Pain User say the other day on Inside the Game that uh, you can learn a lot from watching matchups, and it's, you can learn some things. Um, but watching a game and watching a matchup is no substitute for playing it. Um, and, you know, and if, and I guess what I'm saying is, uh, even for my own casting and skill level, like I definitely need to play more if I want to be a better caster. And I need to play other races, too, if you want to be a good caster. I mean, that's why Sean is so good. Sean plot, i.e. day nine, as we see Djibouti drop his expansion here. It's because not only does he play the other races, um, some of you may have heard if you've been around Reddit uh, in recent weeks, uh, kind of slipped, Sean slipped while streaming Amnesia, that he has reached Grand Master with each race individually. And that, my friends, is a feat. <laughs> uh, very impressive. For someone who is not able to play the game at a competitive, uh, put the amount of time that it takes to play the game competitively, to get Grandmaster at different points, not that he's Grandmaster right now in all three races, uh, but he has been Grandmaster with all three races at one point or another. Pretty damn impressive. Worthless dropping the spines to get uh, some defense up in the event of some early biological pressure. Um, I also have to uh, I have to say that at any point I can break out in a tremendous coughing fit, so be prepared for that if it was if it is to happen. Uh, I haven't tested talking in a long time. Uh, we do have Hellions coming out, the reactive factory. Now I'm just going to switch right back and then just going to pump some Marines. These uh, Hellions just for harassment. 
Um, but at this point, it's actually a little bit late. Djibouti is... Um, it seems like he's moving out a little bit late with these Hellions. He's going to... He's going to have to try and run by and get to the main. If he doesn't try that, if he sticks and tries to do damage here at the natural, he's going to be in trouble. And look at Worthless with this positioning. This is great. So now there's only one way for these Hellions to get in. And look at this. Awesome, awesome building placement. We're going to have Lings. We're going to have the Queens in here. It's going to be really hard for Djibouti to get in here and do any kind of harassment with these Hellions. Really liking this play here by Worthless. Um, but if Djibouti... Now, he can't see. So if Djibouti... Oh, no, he can see that one Hellion. So he knows they're coming. Um, and Djibouti's going to get in here. Again, he's late with this harassment, so it's uh, he shouldn't be surprised. He may just have to just head out, pull out. Now, look at where these Queens are standing. He couldn't get by if he wanted to now. Before, there was a little hole where you could swing through the back, but he can't even do that now. There's no way that this is going to do anything. And we have a macro hatch going down, the layer getting pumped, and this guy's going to try and uh, hit this extractor. The wings are going to come out, immediately get us around, and he's telling us if I'm not wrong for this game. Um, I think maybe Djibouti's just given up on the idea. He's like, alright, well, I don't need these Hellions anymore, so let me just see if I get some kind of damage, but it's no good. So it looks like it's going to be Marine Tank here uh, from Djibouti, putting another Rax down. He is fully operational here on his expansion. Lost all but one Hellion, but I don't think he cared too much about that. Not going to be a big deal for him. Uh, we do have the Spire down and a Baneling Nest, so uh, it's going to be interesting to see... I mean, I don't think that Worthless has really any idea of what Djibouti is actually doing. He hasn't scouted anything since seeing this gas, but I'm guessing that, um, you know, you have two choices. It's either going to be Mech or Bio or Marine Tank. Those are basically your options. Um, I don't know if you consider this a Mech build. Uh, not purely. There are some Hellion, uh, Hellion but... Um, or if you consider it mostly Bio. I don't know. Not going to see Marauders, so um, I don't even know if you would consider this a a mech build or a bio build or just marine tank because that's really what it is. Moving out with some a uh, few SCVs. That's going to be for healing purposes. Wants to get out there and make sure that this third does not get established. Don't want to keep that uh, Zerg on two base if you can. Little SCV heading out in the front. Uh, probably want to knock this down while he's here. But it doesn't look like he's even going to try to do that. And that's a lot of Zerglings. Go up that ramp. Go up that ramp. Go check. Go check up that ramp. There you go. Does see the hatchery up there. Gonna fire away. Gonna kill the all oh, poor Automaton 2000. Poor guy. Forces a cancel on the hatch. Definitely uh, what you need to do there. Mutas are out, though. Uh, not that many. About five. And there's going to be enough Marines here to push them away. And they're going to swing around. we got more tanks coming in. Um, Worthless is probably going to go pick off that tank. Yes, he is going to be able to... Oh, Marines going to come out. He actually does save the tank. Marines against five Mutas, don't know. Um, this would be a perfect spot for the Mutas to park and just... Oh my goodness, he's on siege and the Baileys come in and take out two tanks. We have a Marauder on the scene. More Zerglings coming in. Um, I do not like that trade. He lost all of his tanks and now he can just uh, get some more Lings and Banelings out and that's exactly what he's going to do. He's making... Uh, Three more banelings and twenty-six more lings. Uh, being taken out, being taken out by those five mutalisks. A couple more mutas being made, and Djibouti still on two bases, not getting uh, these other gases because he, um, frankly, he doesn't really need them. He's actually got quite a bit of gas. He's making 
double tanks, he probably wants to get a few more, um, uh, like another factory, and he is making some more barracks, putting on some more reactors, so he is sticking with marines, um, he's got one tech lab that he is, uh, getting the occasional marauder, but it's mostly going to be marines here. And a lot of lings, a lot of, uh, only a couple of banes. Have to see how this goes. It's not a lot of mutalisks, so you don't want to go crazy and start building like, you know, 15 turrets, except maybe here. Probably want to build some over here. That's a lot of lings, and only a few barrels. Uh, Banelings. He's probably going to morph a few Banes right now. <coughs> a couple more Mutas. A few less frames per second. <laughs> Djibouti getting some more tanks out. Uh, tanks, excellent. Excellent against Zerglings. Excellent against Banelings. And if you can space them out, and split your marines, they just wreck this combination. Uh, Stim marines chasing off mutalisks. And I'm wondering if we're going to have any. Now, this is interesting. Worth was bringing down his own rocks to his third. I don't like that at all. You're inviting your uh, opponent. Now there's no protection out here, so Worthless is able to come in here. It's going to take out some reactors. Um, still not very many Marines. I would have probably stood and fought there. Uh, it's got quite a bit of mutas, but now that the medevacs are out, maybe uh, less of a good idea. And he's going to come, try and come back in. No, not going to come back in. But he's taking a fourth now, Worthless is, over here. The middle bottom of the map. More mute is out. And let's check the units tab real quick. We do have 19 mutalisks, 84 servlings, holy free holies, Batman. That is a lot. It's a lot of zerglings. Now is he gonna just make massive banes or what? Now he keeps running away from these smaller marine forces. I don't know if he's trying to force stims and then um, just to weaken these units because there are medevacs out in the field. Um, if he's just trying to keep, I mean, I don't know. He, the Zerg player could just be keeping the Terran back and while he gets his fifth base up and running, I mean, now he's transferring. He basically, um, if we look at the food, the Zerg is way ahead. I mean, he's got a 50 food lead, but the Terran is kind of just turtling up here, and Djibouti can afford to sit back uh, for now and turtle up. He's going to need to make um, he's going to need to make some more tanks. He's going to need to spread them around. Uh, my goodness, he's not making any more lings though but a lot more mutas. And there's going to be an overwhelming number of mutalisks. We have five more coming out to add to this, uh, the 18 we have out here already. And this is just going to be interesting. Three base Terran against a five base Zerg. Spines going up to protect this fifth base. Mutalisk, so many mutalisks here, this doesn't matter that there are these turrets Marine, these six Marines coming in. Oh goodness, we're into all those. Why did he? Well, he definitely needed to run away from that. But here comes the sea of Zerglings looking to come around and flank this army. He's gonna need to wait until. There it is. Oh, you don't want to run in there now. You don't want to run in there. With those Marines! Jibouti. Losing quite a few Marines, but all of the Lings and Banelings are gone now, and just leaving the Mutalisks. And, and they are 1-1, the Mutas are plus 1 attack, but no 
therapist upgrades, um, and he's actually getting plus two attack instead of a carapace. Now, um, Nest T showed, I think, in uh, at MLG recently, or maybe it was Lenoch, that um, you have to upgrade in ZBT, you have to upgrade your Utilist Carapace because that is what's going to help you against this kind of marine ball. What do we got going over here? Just more drone transfer. Zerglings very quickly coming out. Lots and lots of them. Check units back up to 66 Zerglings. Down to 15 uh, Mutas, however. And we have 54 Marines, only 3 tanks. Uh, but a lot of medevacs, and these medevacs are going to be very key in keeping this group of units alive. If the Banelings get out front, this is an area where Djibouti is not that great. He does not have a tremendous marine micro where he's... Um... Oh, hello, sound issues. Sorry about that. Um, he doesn't have great splitting micro. So uh, all of these medevacs... Probably gonna go down. Um, actually, he stuck it out there. He's got 35 Marines here. And uh, it's only uh, 10 Mutas now. More Zerglings being made. Now we have Hives. The Hive Tech is out, so we're getting the Adrenal Gland upgrade. So these Zerglings are gonna be able to attack twice as fast. I think Djibouti could be a little bit of trouble here. Going pure tank marine, he's now getting the upgrade on his tanks, but they can't fire. This one's going to do some good damage, but uh, the stutter stepping with the marines is just not going to be enough. Uh, but there again is several medevacs here. Six medevacs are going to be very helpful in keeping these marines alive. They all have uh, what looks like a fair amount of energy. Um, it's going to need to keep rallying these units out here. Utilis is in the main base. Uh, it's like he's quit. He is making six more Mutalisks. Uh, Djibouti now getting 3-3 three, three upgrades, though, on his Marines. They're going to be very, very powerful. And once again, still no Carapace upgrade on Worthless Mutalisks, which means the Marines are just going to absolutely tear through them. And Djibouti looks to be trying to get a fourth base up. There's a sixth hatchery out here for Worthless. Actually, seventh hatchery, sixth base. Right? One, two, three, four. Oh, my mistake. It's a fifth. It's his fifth hatch. And my dog's going crazy. Don't mind him. Um, and I think that might be what is uh, going to... Wow, 17 Banelings. Uh, it's going to be really tough for Djibouti. Unless he... Oh, yeah. It's, it's a bad engagement. Bad engagement. Look at the position of how the Banelings. They all get killed... Most of them get killed by the tanks before they're able to do any damage. And now the Mutalisks, again, with no um, with no armor upgrades, are uh, going to get just ripped up by these Marines. And you can just watch them go down one by one. And Worthless leaves the game. And I'm telling you what, um, Worthless did really good in this game. He did everything right. Uh, I think he did everything right, except uh, getting that the Muta Carapace, man. Um, if he gets that Muta Carapace, then I think he probably wins. If he's if he keeps up with it, if he's level 3 on his Muta Carapace, then uh, he can hold off these Marines. And um, because, like I said, uh, and you watched, Djibouti didn't have... He, he doesn't have real great splits with his marines. Um, he's good stutter step, but he's not. Uh, you know, he doesn't split, so he loses. If he if one bane hits, his tanks uh, are out of position or something, or he's not see, on siege in time, then um, one bane is going to do like a tremendous amount of damage. So he's relying a lot on luck. Um, but he had his upgrades, and he was able to take down those mutas and. Um, I'm not sure if I would have quit this game if I were uh, worthless. I think maybe he's just getting frustrated or something, but I think he had quite a bit going on. And Djibouti, I don't even know if he had even seen much. Yeah, I didn't even know about this other base over here in the corner. 
So this game probably could have gone on a lot longer. Um, there was larva, larva being spent, larva to be spent. Not uh, oh, look at all these drones not mining. That's pretty bad. Oh, look at all this, but no money. So tough, tough, and um, just uh, not trying to be too critical of Djibouti. His uh, he probably could have had this base up and running. Uh, his macro was slipping a little bit, and his you can see his money's kind of high. But anyway, uh, fun game, fun to watch. Thanks, Rudy, for sending it in. Always appreciate it. And you guys, as always, keep climbing that ladder.